The comedy is definitely back. After Isaac Pitbull Cruz demolishes another opponent, fans are suggesting that somehow Tank Davis is scared. He's afraid of Pitbull Cruz. Yada, yada, yada. Let's talk about it in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. SLC. Subscribe, like, and comment. I am truly the best in the business for all your boxing needs. I got you covered. Make sure you guys subscribe. Hit the red and white button. Now, very fun card on Fox. Andy Ruiz Jr. defeats Luis King Kong. Ortiz. Fun fight. Heavyweight fight. Three knockdowns. Luis Ortiz was the only one that got knocked down. But it was still a close fight somehow. You know, similar to like kind of a Pacquiao versus Marquez part one. Where Juan Manuel Marquez... He got knocked down three times in the first round and still fought to a draw. This was pretty close because you had Ruiz who had the knockdowns, but he was very inactive in other spots and he was getting outboxed. And, you know, Luis Ortiz was boxing and jabbing and stuff like that and winning a lot of the other rounds. So fun fight. Co-main event had even more like sustained action while it lasted. And it was Isa Pitbull Cruz. You know, great fighter out of Mexico. Just he's fun to watch. He's just real fun. And former foe of Gervonta Davis. Now, you guys follow me on Twitter. You guys see my my tweet at Boxing Ego on Twitter. At Boxing Ego One on Instagram. But on my Twitter, I tweeted this. I said, old media and the racist boxing fans are so inconsistent, it is comical. When Gervonta beats Isaac Pitbull Cruz with one hand, they said Tank ain't fought nobody. Even Ryan Garcia said that Tank was fighting C-class bums. Now that Pitbull is laying stuff down, smacking ish, they say Tank is afraid of Cruz. So let me expand on that tweet. It's pretty straightforward, but I like to drive the point home to make sure you guys really feel me. You got to feel me. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. So the premise is as stated. When Tank fought Isaac Pitbull Cruz, the usual suspects, old media, some of the racist boxing fans, they said that because Tank won, they try to minimize the victory and suggest that Tank ain't fought nobody, right? In true old media fashion, they said, oh, why is Tank fighting bums and Da, 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 da. Tank needs to step it up. Tank needs to fight whoever. And this is what they did to Floyd Mayweather, right? When Floyd beat guys that people thought could beat him, because if you if you look back to the fights, you'll see there were people picking Canelo to beat Floyd. There were people picking Shane Mosley to beat Floyd. There were people picking Zab Judah and Oscar De La Hoya. And Miguel Cotto to beat Floyd and Manny Pacquiao. But when Floyd beats those people, then automatically it is negated and torn down and berated as if Floyd waited for people to get out of prime or as if these guys had no chances. But if that was the case, then why did you pick De La Hoya or Canelo or Maidana or whoever to beat Floyd if you thought? that these guys were past prime so you see how it always switches it always switches after the deed is done when the victory is signed sealed and delivered that's when old media they try to find something else to gripe and complain about i see you and that's the same thing with tank when tank was fighting against pitbull cruz they said pitbull cruz was a nobody they said pitbull cruz is a bum they said pitbull cruz is a c-class fighter a C-class fighter, right? So now that Pitbull Cruz, ever since the only person that beat him recently, I think he has two losses. One was a long time ago. And then his recent elite fight, you know, since he's kind of been known in America and the States has been Tank Davis. That's his recent loss. So again, Pitbull Cruz, ever since that Tank Davis L, since Tank gave him the L, Pitbull Cruz has been laying stuff down. The Gamboa fight, it, it doesn't even look competitive. It's like, oh, he's running through guys, 
right? He fought Edward, Eduardo Ramirez. Ramirez seemed increasingly afraid of Pitbull. He seemed petrified. He was moving a lot. He was hesitant to engage. And Pitbull Cruz has a style where he puts a lot of presence on you. He puts a lot of uh, energy into his shots. He's, a, he's an offensive monster. Not much on the defense, but he's coming to bring it offensively. Therefore, you know, some fighters are like that where they're flawed, but their flaws also make them who they are. And their their flaws make them exciting, like Ruslan Provotnikov. Yeah, he's not a defensive wizard, but he definitely going to come to bring it. He got a chin, he got heart, and he got many power. So at the end of the day, it's still fun to watch. Now, sidebar. In the last 30 days, I looked at my YouTube analytics and it showed me something. 50% of you guys that watch my content right here on YouTube for free watched it and hit the subscribe button. Thank you. But the other 50%, for whatever reason, they didn't subscribe. Some people think they're subscribed, but then YouTube does things and unsubscribes them. So make sure you guys check in the middle of this video right now and see if you're subscribed to the channel. On the road to 300K, let's get it. Let's get there. Now, SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. So you see the double standards. You, th you see how all of a sudden it changes when the victory. Now people are, when Pitbull Cruz is looking like a bulldozer, you know, he looking like Miley Cyrus. I came in like a wrecking ball. He looking like a wrecking ball. Now they're saying that Tank Davis is afraid of him and needs to rematch him. But ironically enough, I had Tank Davis comfortably beating Pitbull Cruz even with one hand. You know what I mean? He just and and to me, I thought that performance showed who Tank really is. We knew he can punch. We knew he was a knockout artist, but the smarts and the wits about him, that was more impressive because certain guys are just naturally blessed with power and they get that shot off. They they hurting anybody in their division. But seeing that Tank can box and be injured and deal with tragedy or potential tragedy, you know what I'm saying? In inconveniences when you got LeBron James in the crowd that that was impressive to me you know so shout out to Baltimore shout out to Tank now you guys can even see the tweet from Ryan Garcia right here and this is the day you see it says the actual day December 5th when he fought Pitbull Cruz and you look at the time 9 30 Pacific Standard Time right after the fight ended he was talking about the Eastside Pitbull Cruz and he says and I quote Ryan Garcia on his verified page says, Gervonta gets away with fighting C-level fighters out of all lightweights. He's the weakest. So I don't know if he's talking about Pitbull Cruz or Tank. He said his toughest test was Leo Santa Cruz. He almost lost tonight. Uh, bring it on. I've been calling you out for a while. So ironically enough, after this tweet, Ryan Garcia, who says that Tank is the weakest or Cruz is the weakest and Tank's fighting C-class fighters, Ryan fought some random African. Did we get him? Try again, Motosaka. Do you know? You know, he fought some random African tribesmen in Emmanuel Togo's. So it's like you're one to talk. And then he fought Javier Fortuna, you know, who came out of the lighter divisions and yeah, Fortuna looked like a shell of his former self for whatever reason. So it, it's just ironic how these things work. And furthermore, Ryan acted like he wanted to fight Pitbull Cruz. So how are you going to say the man's basically a bum or C-class fighter, and then you act and pump fake like you want to fight him? Tanks the man. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. I'm the best in the business, but you already knew that. And I'm Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter. 
color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work.